week ago, I did something risky. Asus asked me if I would swap out my MacBook, the laptop I basically run my whole company off of, for this, the Asus ZenBook A14. They said it's lighter, has better battery life, and because it runs on the new Snapdragon X Elite chip, it also should have similar performance to the MacBook. Exciting! So um, I said no, <laughs> but they did send it over anyway. So here is what happened during the last week with the Asus ZenBook A14. My first impression taking it out of the box was that it felt too light, like hollow plastic. But it's not plastic at all. It has the same texture as a very smooth pebble. You know those ones you find on the beach? You know what I'm talking about. And that's all thanks to their new Ceraluminum. It's a aluminium zinc alloy that's been coated in ceramic for its like scratch resistant and shock resistant properties, allegedly. This is the demo unit they sent me as well. So it's been through a few hands and there's no scratches at all. As for fingerprints though, it's a little bit of a different situation, but it's not a big deal. You just wipe it off. Asus was going for light and portable and they hit the nail on the head. At around 980 grams, it's probably one of the lightest laptops I've ever used. The way Asus did the hinge thing though, that is pretty nice. It runs along the entire laptop and is easy to open, literally with one finger. The panel itself is a treat too. When those OLED colors hit you, uh, the deep blacks, the, the rich colors, it just made watching video and content in general such a treat. Sure, it's not a ultra fast 4K panel, but on a screen that's this size, you don't really even notice it. 1080p resolution, it isn't that bad. And it's not a gaming laptop, so more than 60 hertz would have been a waste anyways. I also like what Asus did with the keyboard, for the most part. No funky business. They didn't try to squeeze in a numpad, just large, well-spaced keys. They do have pretty low travel distance though, with only 1.3 millimeters. But overall, it's an experience that's nice and smooth. It's a little bit stiffer than that of my MacBook. And uh, there's no flex in this keyboard structure. For how light this laptop is, it isn't flimsy. It feels like it should be, but it's not. The trackpad though is where things fall a little bit apart when you compare the MacBook to the Asus. You cannot outcompete a MacBook on its trackpad. Like it doesn't work bad. It's just not the same as what I'm used to on my MacBook. And I wanna be very brutally honest here. If you're gonna compare anything to a MacBook, just don't speak about a trackpad. You're gonna lose. There are some very cool things about the Asus ZenBooks trackpad though, like some of the gestures to quickly turn up volume or quickly turn up the brightness of the screen. That is a nice add-on, I will not lie. So if you ask me what my experience was like with the Asus ZenBook, you know, throughout the whole week of using it, uh, Zoom calls, Google meetings, a little bit of like Photoshop work, I had no real issues. It was a pleasant, enjoyable experience until I ran into software stuff. You see, the Asus ZenBook runs on a mobile chip, Snapdragon, which uses a architecture called ARM. And this architecture, well, it differs from what we're used to. What that means though, is that After Effects, I cannot run it on this laptop. And Premiere Pro needs to be emulated before it runs and that makes it very unstable. So it was a bit of a hiccup because I make content for a living. Well, at least that's a big part of what we do. So if you are a person that uses specialized software, I'd highly recommend check this website that I'm also gonna link down below if you want to see whether the software that you currently use can be well run on a mobile chip, a ARM architecture chip. Might be a deal breaker for some of you or at least a deal postponer until they update the softwares. This definitely won't be a super long-term problem though. Adobe has already released full ARM support versions for uh, Photoshop and Lightroom and other developers are doing the same. So it's something to consider right now. However, perhaps if you're looking at this video in a few months time from now, it might not even be an issue anymore. Let's talk about the webcam on the ZenBook A14 though. So this is that test of the ASUS ZenBook A14 webcam. It's not too bad. I mean, if I go into direct good lighting, it changes. I'm pretty okay with some of it. Uh, let me go there. That should work. What do you guys think? Not too shabby, right? It's nice. One thing I have to painstakingly say the ZenBook has over my MacBook is a little something we call ports. The ZenBook comes with ports and uh, Apple believes in no ports. 
The ZenBook comes with two USB 4 40 gigabits per second Type-C ports and a full-size HDMI. I know it looks a little bit smaller, but it's full-sized and a USB A port for all of your older tech. So you don't have to carry around a dongle with you. So they can't charge you extra for your dongle. They should learn from Apple. That's how Apple makes a lot of money. I love that I actually also didn't really have to carry around my charger with me. Like they promised on portability and they delivered on that promise. I got about one and a half to two days of battery life out of my ZenBook, which is like 18 hours of working time. It's really impressive. I don't know if you've ever experienced not having to charge a device every single time you use it, but as a gamer, as somebody that uses gaming laptops from time to time, unfortunately, I know how it feels to continuously have to carry around a massive brick with you to charge your laptop at all times. That's not the case with the ZenBook. You just pop it in and go. Spread seats, zoom calls, you name it, no issues. Now, if you zoom in to the insides of this laptop, you'll get to the NPU, the Neural Processing Unit. It's something that they put a lot of emphasis on saying, oh, AI this, AI that, massive selling point. In practice, it's not really that usable yet. Yes, if you run onboard AI, fantastic, thank you very much. However, most of us use cloud AI at the moment, so we don't really get much of that onboard NPU goodness that you would think we would use. But at least it's better than the AI in Apple intelligence, I like promise that. They promised. That's nice. One day. One day we'll also get there. We're always always about five years behind, aren't we? <laughs> Ten years for some of us. Anyways. So after spending a week with the ASUS ZenBook and being used to my MacBook Pro, all of the great features that the ZenBook gives, the battery life, the amounts of ports, how portable and lightweight it is, would I switch over? I really have to think. It's not that much to think about. I just can't. Moving over to a system that doesn't have support for the softwares I use on a day-to-day, -day, it just wouldn't be a smart move. And perhaps that is a similar situation that you are in right now. I think if you are a student, a casual user, somebody who writes a lot of articles and papers, does a lot of movie watching, nothing with specialized software yet, then this is such a good buy. Just the fact that I can flip it around and throw it in my backpack and it's not a eyesore, a heavy thing in my backpack, that makes it worth buying to me. And especially if you're trying to like avoid the Apple ecosystem at all costs, this is what you're looking for. Honestly, compared to a lot of the other Windows laptops I've looked at in the last few weeks, the ZenBook destroys all of them. Straight out of the weight category, out of the battery life category. I'm a fan. This gets a proper 8.8 .8 out of 10 from the WeDo Tech team. And speaking about the WeDo Tech team, we are also building a brand new Discord server. So if you guys want to play games together or send us some video ideas, products that you want us to review, you should definitely join the Discord server. We're also going to be sharing some of our reviews before they go online there. So if you want to have a first inside info scoop on the products, head over to the link down below in the description. That's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching this review. I'll see you in the next one. This was Stefan from WeDo Tech spending the money, sometimes wasting it, so you don't have to. Cheerios, bye.